My name is Mariah Thompson, and my interesting case takes place on a busy night shift in West. Uh, we had a very sick patient next door, and I was pulled aside by one of the nurses. They said, we have this sickle cell patient. They're in a lot of pain. Can you please come see them? So when I walk into the room, I see um, a male in his late 20s. Um, he's Arabic speaking only, appears to be in a lot of pain, gestures all over, but also clutches his chest. Uh, we start fluids, um, IV pain medication, supplemental oxygen. We get an ECG, which is normal, while waiting for the Arabic interpreter. We do get a little bit more information when you're here, he arrives. Um, this gentleman was here visiting from Saudi Arabia with his father, who was receiving treatment here at Mayo. Um, he was staying in a hotel locally, took a, a hot shower, and when he stepped out into the cold hallway, had an acute onset of diffuse pain in his arms, legs, worse in his chest, radiating to his back. He had an episode of nausea with uh, one episode of emesis associated with the pain, but otherwise review of systems was negative. He denied any fever, chills, respiratory symptoms, no recent illness. He had been doing well up until this time. His sickle cell history, um, he indicated that he still had his spleen. His vaccinations were up to date. He would have pain episodes um, approximately every two to three months, but his last episode was eight months ago. Um, he had never had any more severe complications such as stroke or acute chest syndrome. We had no records available on this gentleman since he was from Saudi Arabia. His um, vital signs on arrival were within normal limits, although he was borderline tachycardic. Um, but he was afebrile with a normal respiratory rate. And on exam, he was obviously in a lot of pain, but his exam was otherwise within normal limits. Um, chest was clear, absolutely normal neurologic exam. So at this point, the differential was broad. Uh, was this uh, a severe pain episode? Was this a more severe complication like acute chest syndrome? Was this a pulmonary embolism? Um, was this um, um, something cardiac? Was it uh, pneumonia? Although that would be unusual given his lack of respiratory symptoms. However, time would tell with this individual, um, as on reassessment, he spiked a fever uh, of 38.2. He was mildly tachycardic, tachypnic, um, but most importantly, when we took him off the nasal cannula, his saturations dropped to 76% on room air. Um, we did obtain, obtain a chest x-ray, which showed diffuse infiltrates um, in his bilateral lung fields, uh, as you can see here. So in this individual who is rapidly decompensating in front of us, um, who had spiked a fever and now had low oxygen saturations, with this x-ray, our concern was growing for the development of acute chest syndrome. The remainder of his workup revealed a hemoglobin of 8.1. He had an elevated white count as well as elevated reticulocytes. Um, however, the remainder of his workup was within normal limits. Um, again, we had no prior documentation to know what his baseline hemoglobin was, um, and he was unaware either. We continued treatment with D5 half normal saline, um, treated his pain with IV pain medications, trying to avoid over sedation and depression of his respiratory um, drive. Uh, we provided supplemental oxygen, initiated antibiotics, um, started a simple transfusion in the ED while he awaited admission to the MICU where he eventually received exchange transfusion, had a four to five day hospital course, um, and was discharged and doing well. Sickle cell is not as frequent here in Minnesota as it is in the rest of the world, but we do see these patients, and so we need to be aware of the, um, more, acute, uh, the more serious complications, such as acute chest syndrome, which is the leading cause of death in sickle cell disease patients. It is defined as a new radio density on chest x-ray plus fever and or respiratory symptoms. Um, so this is cough, tachypnea, decreased oxygen saturations, increased work of breathing. So it's a pretty broad definition. And as such, um, it's important to keep in mind that you cannot reliably differentiate pneumonia from acute chest syndrome in these patients. Um, because the definition of pneumonia fits the definition of acute chest syndrome. So they need treatment with um, 
with early IV antibiotics, but ultimately will need transfusion as this is a treatment for acute chest syndrome. There are differences in how um, adults and children will present. Um, however, the management is fairly similar. The adult tends to have a more severe course, um, and acute chest syndrome often follows a um, beno-occlusive pain episode. Uh, they have a higher risk of mortality, so you have to have higher suspicion and a lower threshold for initiating transfusion in this patient population. Um, the causes aren't fully understood. It's thought to, due to be due to uh, occlusion of microvasculature within the lungs. It can be related to infection, um, lipid uh, and bone marrow emboli, hypoventilation, asthma, and in situ pulmonary thrombi. Um, of the infectious causes, the most common culprits um, are your atypicals, mycoplasma, uh, chlamydia pneumonia, as well as haemophilus influenza, strep pneumo. So antibiotic coverage is similar to that for community acquired pneumonia with coverage for atypicals. In addition to um, antibiotic coverage, um, acute management involves hypotonic fluids for correction of hypovolemia, adequate pain management, uh, supplemental oxygen, as well as incentive spirometry to um, prevent atelectasis, which can further complicate the scenario. But ultimately, these patients will need transfusion. For a mild case, um, simple transfusion can be sufficient. However, for moderate to, to severe cases of acute chest syndrome, they will need exchange transfusion, as this allows for a lower percentage of hemoglobin S uh, without the hyperviscosity that you get with simple transfusion. Uh, so, in summary, the, the, the um, takeaway pearls from this talk are that um, acute chest syndrome is the leading cause of death in sickle cell patients, so it needs to be high on our differential. We need to have a low threshold for initiating uh, transfusion in these patients. Often exchange transfusion um, is the therapy of choice, and we need to initiate IV antibiotics as it cannot be reliably differentiated from pneumonia.